what up guys i figure i come uh come to you with a little update video uh yesterday i went to go install the motion raceworks drive shaft sensor on my car and uh, i slid up under here you know while the transmission's out and everything and uh i was like man i'll go ahead and install this sensor so i got up under here and i put that collar on which is just two bolts and it's a collar i mean you have to have the strange yoke damn my yoke's getting a little rusty for fucking sitting in this moist garage it's it's warm outside in the middle of december and you see the concrete sweating i need to clean that but this is a strange yoke right here i don't know if you can see that but that's a strange yoke and it has the provision for the for the reluctor wheel right there so all that was fine and dandy but i was up under here and i was laying on my back and i looked up and my to my torque box is ripped in half almost completely i can't see up there but uh my torque box is completely ripped in half so that's a pretty big major thing that i'm gonna have to repair let me get out from up under here and then i'll go over what i'm gonna be doing today on this thing um and my plan with to repair this so as far as the torque box back there is concerned that's if you're going to be hot rodding like what i'm doing doing really hard launches radial stuff uh, especially when you weigh your car down you're going to end up running into issues like that which and i knew that this day was coming but i didn't want it to be right now so i have a buddy that has a um a 85 ss i think um it's super clean the the frame is already like boxed in on it and stuff and he said he'll give me a good deal on that but i also might just get the mirror lat torque box for the back i was talking to my dad yesterday and he was talking about possibly helping me buy that because i just dropped all this money because my dad's in the motor motorsports too i just dropped all this money on these brakes and uh, that motion race work sensor and the bump steer kit and all that stuff so my dad said that he might help me with that mirror lap box and that'll be another video i guess this winter i didn't expect to really be down this long but we're gonna probably end up getting a mirror lap torque box for this and if you don't know what that is look them up super badass setup um but what i'm gonna be working on today is doing the strange brakes on the front and uh basically where i'm at right now is let me get the light is i have it broke down which is pretty simple you literally just take the wheel off you pop the brake caliper off two bolts one back here one back there take the brake caliper off and then you have one nut right here you just loosen that nut up and the whole fucking rotor and everything comes off it's nothing to take it apart so according to the strange directions i have to cut this spindle and i'm going to eventually upgrade to the aluminum spindles but i just don't have the money especially with having to do the the torque boxes now i just don't have that in the budget right now so i gotta deal with what i got for now but according to the strange directions we got to cut this lip cut this off right here and we got to cut this off right here so that's what i'm going to work on now because their bracket this bracket right here bolts onto there but it's not going to work with this stuff in the way so we got to cut this off and we got to cut this off and then we're gonna have to drill this out and drill this all the way through to and then tap it out to a 7 16 i think it's a 24 uh thread so that's what i'm going to be working on today that's the update for the back of the car which like i said sucks um but you know that's racing and we'll get it all fixed up and hopefully be ready to kick some ass in 2024. piece cut off right there and then I'm gonna get my other one and just kind of smooth that out a little bit round the edges off and everything and I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna cut this one straight up here just like that 
And according to the directions, I mean, as far as I could tell, that's what they, that's what they ask. And you see right here, it says cut that jammy and cut that jammy right there. I don't, it's hard to see. Let me see if I can blow it up one time for you. Boom, boom, boom. Let's get in there. Cause this is all that I, uh, this is all that I have to go by. I couldn't find the, uh, exactly what I was looking for. This is a strange, uh, brake set, but it's not the evolution brake set. So uh, I think it, it deal, it goes for the evolution cause all this hardware looks the same. So we got to chop that right there and we got to chop that down there. And that's what we're doing. We'll go ahead and get uh, chopping the stop one. As you can tell, it's kind of a pain in the ass. This was, I only have one new grinding blade, so I'm just gonna do this side with what I got, and then I'll go get a couple more grinding blades. So I need to trim that just a little bit more up, and then I'm gonna get my flappy wheel in here and, and kind of clean it up a little bit. <laughs> All right, so I got it. Uh, I got them pieces lopped off right there. Um, you see, I kind of just made it more or less straight up right there on the top one, and then just kind of lopped it off. They say to move it, to cut it approximately an inch from the center of your mounting hole, which this one looks like I'm a little bit closer than an inch, but I don't see why it'll be a problem. So I'm gonna get my flappy wheel in here and just make this look, you know, not deadly, not not sharp and fucking it'll kill you so i'm gonna go ahead and, and make this look nice and uniform roll the edges over and then i think that's all the modifications basically except for you got to drill and tap this out to the 7 16 24 i believe is what that thread pitch is um but i'm gonna have to run to the store and get a tap for that i should have the drill bit but i'm gonna have to run to the store and get a tap for that so here we go with the flappy go in here and make it look nice and pretty you know what i'm saying Brand new flappy wheel. These are the best. I'm sure everybody knows about them now, but I remember when they first came out, my dad wouldn't quit fucking talking about them. He was like, man, the fucking flappy wheel's the coolest thing that's ever happened to this planet, man. And I was like, yeah, it's cool. So as you can tell, got that nice and cleaned up. No burrs, no nothing. Made a mess. That's what happens when you fucking grind. I hate doing this kind of shit, but it is what it is. So that should be ready other than drilling and tapping them holes, which I'm going to have to run. It's only like 6 o'clock in the morning right now because I'm an early bird. But as far as I can tell, this should just go right on there like that. Looks like I might have to grind that web down a little bit. But I think that, that just bolts on there like that. And then your caliper goes onto that. And you're in good shape. So I think I need to grind that a little bit and clearance it. Back into that.
still hitting a little bit right there. Let's go ahead and grind it, baby. But you want to be careful. You can see that I hit it a couple times. You don't really want to hit this face too much where that where that mounting point is. You see that I rolled it a little bit, so I'm gonna be a little be a little bit more careful to not hit that because you want that to be these were machined all three at the same uh at the same time to the same height so you don't want to twist or cock that you can see that i hit it a little bit but i should still be okay um don't really try not to hit your uh your spot face that's what they call it as a spot face so i'm just going to try to focus straight on these ribs right here and try to not hit my spot face for my bracket All right, guys. Well, I'm a big old dummy. I came back up here. I got done uh, messing with them webs a little bit. I, I shaved them just a little bit. But these, that tw number 25 spacer right here actually goes under the bracket and then onto that spot face right there. So you do not have to clear them webs. I shaved them a little bit because I was, I don't know, I just didn't fucking pay attention to the drawing, I guess. But uh, anyways, you don't have to shave these webs. I just kind of shaved them just a little bit um with the flappy wheel it's not gonna hurt anything shit i lost a little bit more weight it's the way i look at it so you do not have to shave them webs but you do have to lop this off approximately an inch from there and you have to uh lop this one off approximately an inch from the center of there but i just cut that back because it kind of looks like it's supposed to be like that instead of going straight up uh so Basically, right now, I'm on hold until Ace Hardware opens, and hopefully they have a 7 16 14, I think is what it was. I think I said like 24 or something, uh, but it's 7 16 14, I believe, uh, if I can find it up on here again. Uh, but yeah, it's a 7 16 14, and I'm on hold until I can get a tap. Uh, but I guess I can go ahead and drill it out, though. So we'll get a, a drill, and we'll go ahead and drill out the spindle and be ready for the tap after I get the tap then I don't see why I can't put it back together I need to get some grease while I'm out too I have a little bit but we need to pack these bearings and uh, I'll be honest with you I'm a little bit shocked because I thought that this was supposed to be some kind of like really nice like different bearing setup and, I mean these are just standard ass bearings in here just the Timken bearing that's what came with the kit and then this is the outside bearing, which is exactly the same as the one that came out of my car. And I mean, to be honest with you, my car didn't have a lot of drag. Let me see if the passenger side, I mean, uh, eh, a little bit, not too bad. We'll do a comparison after we get the other side together. But this has a little bit of surface rust on my uh, rotor right now from sitting out here. I told you earlier that the it's not as bad today but yesterday my entire garage floor was just like wet it looked like it rained in my garage it's like 70 degrees in the middle of december so everything's just sweating but anyways i'm gonna go ahead and find the drill bit and drill out the spindle and then we'll be ready to almost get back together all right so there we go it is a 7 16 14 so what you do is you just look up 7 16 14 drill tap size and uh according to mr google it says uh 368 or it would be a u drill u drill uh if you don't know drills i don't have a drill set but a real drill set is uh is labeled in uh letters like at work everything's in letters so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through my drills right here and find whatever I have closest to 368. And uh, you should always have a nice set of calipers in your garage. This is a Mitotoyo, which is a, a better set. Uh, but you can go to Harbor Freight and get you a set. And just get you a set of 8-inch or 6-inch calipers, maybe even 12-inch calipers. And it comes in handy for stuff like this. Because when you're drilling and tapping, you want to have the right drill size. If you don't have the right drill size, you could either have too small of a hole, and then you try to tap it, and then you'll end up breaking your tap in your hole. Which, that fucking sucks. 
because then you got to try to get your tap out of your hole. But then if you have a drill bit that's too big, then your threads won't be formed and then your spindle's practically trash. I mean, I could drill it up to another drill size bigger, but then you got to go get another bolts and then you got to find a pan head bolt and then it just turns into a snowball. So when you do this, when you drill and tap, you always want to make sure that you have the right size drill bit and a nice set of calipers or, or just a, good, a set of calipers in general will get you the right size drill bit. All right, so here we go. We got uh, the right drill bit. This one is actually a 359 drill bit versus the 363 because that's all that I could find. I didn't have the right one and uh, Ace Hardware didn't have the right one. So we have the tap here and I'm about to drill out the holes and tap it. And since this is going to be a little bit firm because this drill bit's a little bit small, um, I don't think that we're going to have too much of a problem because it's cast iron and our cast steel. So I don't think that because this drill bit's three and a half thousand small that we're going to run into an issue. But if you don't have the right drill bit, you always want to go with the one, one size smaller versus one size bigger. Let me plug in the drill. So they said, oh, and another thing. So they said that for the top one, you want to drill it in. You want to drill and tap at least an inch. So I'm going to show you a trick that I learned at work that, I mean, it's not fucking rocket science, but I'll show you a trick that, uh, that'll help you while you're drilling out to get that depth. That way you don't have to keep measuring it. You know, like I said, this is like literally not rocket science. So what you do is you're going to measure an inch. We'll go 1.1. I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to go 1.1 on here. About 1.1. It ain't got to be perfect. And then I'm just going to get my, my, uh, my drill right here. And just measure down on the drill. Put a piece of tape on there. So I know when my tape gets to the spindle. I'm going there just a little bit further and I'm where I need to be. Like I said, not rocket science, but this is so that you don't have to keep taking the uh, drill bit out and measuring it. Ooh, my drill might not have enough ass. Oh, shit. Damn. All right, well, we'll see how this goes. Alright, so normally you would have like an actual tap handle for this, but I don't have a tap handle at my house, so I rigged up a ratchet. And what you want to do is you just want to be easy with it. Uh, you can use a little bit of lube if you want to, but usually, most of the time with cast iron, you don't really need lube. Um, if you want, you can spray a little bit of WD on there, and um, I don't think that'll, that'll hurt you, and it won't really help you either, but for cast. But here we go, let's see if we can thread it in there. And like I said, this hole is actually a little bit smaller because that drill bit is one size small. All right, so I got the top one done, tapped out. Now I'm working on the bottom one. Can't find my fucking tap handle. Can't find the right fucking socket to go for the end of the tap. So, uh, you know, it's backyard shit, man. So just put the old croissant on there. And just uh, tap her in. You know, like Happy Gilmore? Just tap it in. And this one's a through hole. So, it's not that bad. And the, uh, I put a little bit of WD on there. It definitely did help it out. A lot of the times on cast iron, it don't really, because it just breaks up. Cast iron breaks up. And this one is a through hole, so that's why it's a little bit easier too. The chips can get out the back. So, just go ahead and tap in this all the way through. 
and uh, yeah, I'm breaking out the back right now. You got to be careful when you're breaking out the back on a through hole. It'll want to get, it'll want to tighten up, and it'll, it can be easy to break your tap. You don't want to do that. So one thing that you don't want to do is break your tap in your hole. So. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, because unless you chamfer these holes, which I don't have a chamfer here, if you have a chamfer at your house, chamfer your hole after you drill it. Because when you tap it, it's going to roll this edge up a little bit. So I'm going to use my flappy wheel and just kind of smooth that back down real quick. Break clean, clean your hole out. That's good. We'll wipe it all down one more time, like I said. So now, as far as I'm concerned, let's find out. Hopefully, that bracket will bolt right on here, and then that would. That's basically it. It just goes back together after that, I believe. But that's the modifications you need to do to put the uh, the bracket on. All right, so I'm putting the bracket on now. And then this is what I was talking about earlier. When I was talking about these webs right here on the back backside. Uh, you did not have to, to, to grind them webs like I did on this side because of these spacers, you, you put these spacers on and then you just bolt that bracket right on there. And go ahead and snug this up. And hopefully the other hole up there on the top lines up. Where'd the other, uh, my other bolt go? Where'd my other bolt go? I lost it. Going forever. Up here, on the bench, I got it. I got it. All right. Get a little bit of light in there maybe for you. Hopefully, let's see if this lines up, guys. Should. Supposed to. And look at that. Bolted right on there. And right now, I'm just putting everything together to, um, well, it looks like I need to drill it deeper or something. Looks like I need to tap it deeper on the top one. The bottom one's good though. Yeah, the bottom one's real good. Top one on the other hand, I gotta do a little bit of work on the top one. Alright guys, so my battery died the other day because the battery sucks on my GoPro and I've told y'all that a couple times. I need to get a couple maybe aftermarket batteries. Uh, me and Levi were out here uh after work on like wednesday or something like that i'm gonna go ahead and uh, finish this video up so i got everything on it looks fire i love it uh all right so to finish up the install basically you've seen i just all i had to do was uh tap my hole a little bit deeper on the top i, I didn't tap it all the way so basically what I did is after you drill and tap your holes, they give you, they supply you with a bunch of washers so you can space the caliper how you need it to be spaced. And uh, basically I just needed two washers right there under there, under the spacer. And my shit is pretty straight. Um, let me see if I can, the rotor's crooked right now because I don't have a wheel on it. There we go. So that's all that mine needed was just those two washers up on the top and I'm pretty much straight um, And that's the install I need to get a brake line, but that's it 
Um, that's the strange evolution brake stall, brake install on a G body. And I put in one side of my bump steer kit. Uh, and that's just bolt on. Uh, one thing that I, do, I did notice about it is that it's just way beefier than the other stock tie rod. I mean, look how thick that thing is. So that's more safe. You have to drill this taper out to just a half inch through hole for this. And that's all you got to do for that install. And then you got to get in alignment, obviously. Um, the wheel does, uh, does rotate pretty freaking good. Let me get here. I got, let me get my wheel on here real quick. And, uh, and let me zip this thing on here for you. You got to keep in mind, I'll go over there and I'm going to spin the other side too. But the other side has the brakes dragging on it. We haven't pumped the brakes up on this at all. So there's actually zero drag. But. Yeah. Alright, so there we go. I don't know what the fuck the deal with that was. Is that what you guys say about it, Levi? Yeah. But this thing, it does... Yeah, pretty good i don't know what the fuck that i think that that noise that you hear in there is the is the center cap right here or something i don't know what the fuck that noise is that's not with the, the bearings or anything i think it's the uh the thing inside of the wheel these welds they have a thing in there but they it, it spins good they look good um when you put your hub back on you basically just you tighten it down they put they tell you to tighten it down to like 20 foot pounds and then back it off and then you just tighten up more uh, kind of by hand you just you just get the backlash out of the hub and then put the the carter key in it and you're done so like i said all i got to do is i got to get brake lines and that's the install i figure if you had all your tools in a good drill that doesn't suck you could probably do it in two hours three hours maybe um now that i know what i got to do on the other side i'll knock the other side out in probably 45 minutes mm -hmm. so it sucks that i'm gonna have to do a uh a torque box on my car but that's gonna be another video that you guys can look forward to seeing sometime in the next month or so i'm gonna get this front end wrapped up this weekend coming up i might film a little bit we'll see um but then after that I think that I'm probably just going to cruise the car a little bit. You want to go outside, Levi? Uh, I can still drive the car right now. Um, but I can't race it the way that that torque box is. So, anyways, that's the Strange uh, Evolution 4 install on a G-Body. And that's the update on the car on where I'm at. Um, and a couple things to look forward to on the channel. So, alright guys. Don't forget to like, share, comment. If you got any questions on the install, on the car, the setup, what I'm going to be doing in 24, uh, just, like I said, drop a comment, share, let me know if I suck, if I'm good. Um, I'm going to try to quit saying, um, somebody called me out on it the other day, but it's kind of hard to like narrate if you haven't narrated before. So, all right, peace out.